chick tube, World War II, named Zalen. Uh, be talking about the Tempest this evening. I want to get this video out. It's getting pretty late. I enjoyed Jason's video um, earlier very much. And I, I have some questions about this play. I've seen it. I've seen a couple of adaptations of it. I've read it three times, three or four times. It's possibly my favorite Shakespeare play. I also like all the tragedies. I hope we get a chance to do Macbeth next um, September. I think that would be a great play to do around this time of year or two. But um, The Tempest I like because, you know, it just, what kind of play is it? Well, it's a supernatural play. It's a love story. It's a father and son reunion. It's a shipwreck story, for sure. It's, it's filled with magic and spells and supernatural things that are quite interesting to a lot of people. There is a monster, and there is a spirit guide, a fairy. There, it's funny, and there's comic relief in it. There's drunks and... Um, and this adventure, it just yeah. has all Shakespeare. And I would like to play, I, the first time I saw it was in Kent State. I was like a freshman in the early 80s. And I worked on the scenery and the set. I was part of the, the group, the parties. And, you know, I did everything. Swept up afterwards, ran lines. I And I fell in love with it then. Um, I'd like to play... Caliban, myself, I would play him with like hoodwinked or uh, appearing ho hoodwinked. You wouldn't want to walk around stage with blinders on, but you know, you can see through. Or with headdresses like Horus. I don't think that's the original idea of mine. And like long hair, bearded, uh, tall, um, like half naked. I, I think I have his accent or dialect down. Maybe I'll do something for you. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Now, Jason mentioned in his video, no, uh, Pispero does not seek revenge. He doesn't. In fact, T.S. Ariel, but are they Ariel safe? Meaning the crew, Ariel says, uh, not a hair perished. And they go on to, uh, this is, Act one. What, ooh, let's see. Uh, it's uh, two sixty one. Do I have the actor scene down? I'm talking about two sixty one. Where is it? It's early on. Ariel, no, uh, not a hair perished. And troops, I have dispersed them, meaning he's separated them up, and uh, he's dispersed them about about the isle. The king's son, have I landed by himself? So no, he's not seeking revenge, but he's fucking with them a lot. He's he separated the king's son, and they they both think that the other one is dead or drowned. So he's not revenge like um, Titus Andronicus, I don't think. Uh, but I don't think Jason makes that point either. Let's see. I have a question for someone I don't know the answer to for once. My question is, uh, where is it? It's early on. Where is it exactly? Let me get the text. It's in Act 1, Scene 2, Note 67, Milan. You know, the, the, the hero was the king of Milan. But there's a Note 67. Throughout the play, this word is pronounced Milan. M-I-L-L-I-N, with the accent on the first syllable, as in the word millinery. And I've seen productions where um, they call it Milan, but I've heard adaptations, and I've seen productions where they call it um, Millen. So my question is, why? Why are they calling it Millen? It's not like, that's how they pronounced Milan back in Shakespeare's day, because it's a note in the text. 
not to call it Milan. So, uh, possibly, uh, we'll see if anyone knows the answer. If I don't hear from anyone, I'll put it uh, forth to Steve. Well, that's one of my questions. Well, this play poses many questions. Yeah, uh, I think Pospiro is a major manipulate, manipulator. To put it lightly, you know, he uh, he's keeping Ariel and Caliban slaves, both with continued promises of freedom. The Ariel is going to be in two days' time once he gets his stuff done. Anyone read the uh, novel Hanksy by um, Margaret Atwood that came out? years ago. I, I was living in Toledo, Ohio, and I picked it up at the library three years ago, but I've never I never finished it. So that would be a cool thing to read along with this, if anyone has. Yeah, uh, Prospero calls Caliban Hayseed at 440. That's... Um, the, the play begins in median race. Race, I'll spell it out, you know, that means uh, in the midst of things, in the, in the middle of the action, it begins with uh, in the middle of uh, 12 years of this, that uh, Spiro has put a spell on the, all these crew, the king, his brother, the usurper, uh, the duke, his brother is, and, uh, and others, because uh, his daughter, Miranda is only 12 years old. Now, that begs the question, isn't any with a love story, but in that day and age, my very own grandmother got married at 14. Oh, she tube. I got my uh, video stopped, so I, I'd like to tie this up real fast. As if, so I left off, my grandmother got married when she was 14 in Kentucky. And Miranda is only 12 years old. She has not seen another human being, um, let alone a man, in her life. And for Prospero to manipulate that situation and put a spell on Ferdinand is a moral issue, I think. So I touched on that. I, I like to look at uh, Ariel and Caliban as opposites in a way, with Ariel a fire and air type uh, element, energy with uh, being active, positive, male. Now, I don't mean like positive, because uh, earth and water is Caliban. Those are feminine, negative, uh, passive. Doesn't mean one's good, one's bad, or anything, just the dichotomy of the element. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that, I think. <laughs> a lot of comic relief with the, the get Caliban drunk. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but hopefully there'll be some more discussion tonight and tomorrow. I had fun with this Shape 2 season, and I look forward to the next. In the meantime, wish you a good weekend, and gosh, hope.